These people want me dead. I need to leave now. So Doris just needed to be close to her audience to infect them. Contagion through skin. Very disturbing. Thank <laughs> you. 
I'm doing this. This is despicable.
Elizabeth, what are you doing here? I've been formally asked to witness your triumph, my dear. After all, isn't it the natural role of a woman to support her man in victory? But it's you who insisted I join the Ascalon. Please forgive my giddiness. I'm just overcome by the thrill of finally being allowed within these hallowed halls. You certainly have an inquisitive mind. It's quite something. Elizabeth Ashbury, only you can make me smile in these difficult times. And the same to you, Jonathan Reed. Now go have your little chat with the chairman. I can see he's practically bursting to hear your report. I have a boat ready to go whenever I want. These hunters won't catch me. As long as I've been a member, I've never seen so few vampires attending the club nights. Lord Redgrave is outside almost every night coordinating our defenses. Such an We repelled the intruders for now. But how long before they return? I personally went patrolling last night in the West End, and I spotted at least two foreign aircons. This is an outrage. We shall chase these intruders down. Perhaps we should change some of the club's rules if we Welcome back to the Ascalon Club, Lance Bearer. Please tell us the good news. Have you put an end to the epidemic? My hypothesis was correct. Doris Fletcher was the source of the contagion in this part of town. She was probably the first to be infected. And you cleansed her before the hunters, I've been told. Well done, Dr. Reed. You thrust your lance and pierced the very heart of the corruption. But some questions remain. The important thing is, we won a major battle for the survival of London. For that, we salute you. Thank you, my lord. Now, I have another task for you. One of the utmost importance. Perhaps even more so than the previous. I'm listening. It's time for you to perform a most sacred duty for the club. I want you to recruit a new vampire. Recruit a new vampire? Are you sending me on some sort of diplomatic mission? Not exactly. I want you to make Aloysius Dawson the Econ he deserves to be. I'm not sure I'm the best candidate for such a task. I can hear the hesitation in your voice, Dr. Reed. I admire a man of principles. But in this matter, there is more at stake than your moral comfort. It's not a moral question, Lord Redgrave. It's the responsibility of giving immortality to a man I barely know. Nonsense. Aloysius has been a member of the Ascalon for years. This is but the fruition of a long-held plan. How would you like me to proceed? Aloysius is waiting for you at the Dawson Estate. Once the deed is done, I'll join you there to celebrate this momentous occasion. Before I go, I have a few questions. All right, I'm listening. Why Aloysius Dawson? Because he is about to die. And he just may be the most influential man in England. After me, of course. Did he choose me? No, I did. My decision is very recent, to say the least, but it is entirely mine. Does he know I'm coming? He can't wait to become your progeny, Dr. Reed. 
Especially now that you have shown how strong your lineage is through your sister. You invited Lady Ashbury. Wouldn't that be breaking one of your cardinal rules? No women allowed. Not allowed as members, no. But considering the circumstances, I thought you'd like to have her here to witness your triumph. So it's a temporary admittance, then. Something of a bargain, considering the crisis we're currently facing. How would you like me to proceed? Don't worry. Aloysius has had many years to prepare himself. He has studied our kind for decades. So shall I just let him drink my blood? Yes. Aloysius will gratefully sup on your blood. His heart will slow, then stop. But he will rise again as one of us, an immortal. Is there any danger? Our blood alters a mortal body so deeply that some don't survive the metamorphosis. They die for good. But Mr. Dawson has been preparing himself for a long time. Goodbye, Lord Redgrave. Are you all right, Jonathan? Lord Redgrave has just ordered me to turn Aloysius Dawson, to make him my progeny. I see. And how do you feel about this? I'd like your advice on the matter. The real question here is, why has his lordship given you this task? Do you think it's some sort of trap? Do you really want to know what I think about this? I do, yes. To make an immortal of a soulless blackguard like Aloysius Dawson will only lead to a disaster for London. The man is already dead inside. Should I refuse? Perhaps politely suggest that Lord Redgrave turn the man into a vampire himself. Don't you dare, my dear. According to what I've recently discovered, his lordship could kill you for even broaching the subject. Really? Why? I've recently found proof that the Earl of Bristol is of lesser lineage and only capable of creating skulls. Please, tell me more about your recent investigation. As long as you lower your voice. Are you sure your information about Redgrave is correct? He says he's the progeny of the great knight William Marshall, who lived some nine centuries ago. That's a lie. Lord Redgrave is unable to create anything but skulls, if the poor soul survive at all. How can you be sure the information was correct? I made the acquaintance of a most interesting informer while investigating your maker, from whom I learned the truth about Lord Redgrave. Why so vindictive? You suddenly sound like you're angry. Forgive me, Jonathan. I hate myself for it, but I feel such pride in my discovery. I'm afraid I just can't help it. Which is? He did serve William Marshall. And yes, the blood he covets as a token does truly belong to that legendary knight. But he was never his progeny. His lineage is not so noble. What would you have me do about Dawson? The man is dangerous. Did you know he plans to build a wall to separate the healthy rich from the sickly poor? Do not make him your progeny. What would you do? The man's dying already. Let the Reaper harvest the rotten fruit that is his soul. 
What would happen if I made Dawson an Ekon like myself? You would add a powerful immortal into a suffering world. An immortal who already craves authority. Maybe I could teach him control, like you taught me. Lead him down the right path. Mr. Dawson spent his life searching for a way to cheat death. I'm sure he has spent decades dreaming of how he'd spend eternity as a tyrant. Goodbye for now, Elizabeth. Goodbye, my dear. Please, be careful. It looks like vampires have to obey Mendel's laws when producing progeny. Powers pass from one generation to another. That's why Dawson wants me to sire him. Sorry, sir. No admittance. It's a leech! Kill it! <coughs> oh, Christ! Good evening, Dr. Tippett. 
Doctor Reed, any good? Do you need any medical assistance? Yes, indeed. But don't worry, I am perfectly capable of taking care of myself. I have no doubt about it, but you are still ill all the same. Please, take this medicine. I appreciate your concern, Dr. Reed. To be honest, I just did not take the time to diagnose myself. Goodbye, Dr. Tippetts. Good evening, Miss Halcroft. How are you tonight? I need blood, Doctor. Do you require my services, Miss Halcroft? My condition cannot be understood by you, mortal. This curse is beyond your science. Well, until the day science finally admits failure, please accept this little contribution. Thank you, Doctor. Your efforts are admirable. Though laughable. I'll leave you, Mistress of the Dark, to your nocturnal activities. With you at our side, Dr. Reed, I know that Pembroke I will not let you down, my boy. Good evening, Mr. Goswick. I'm okay. Do you need any help? I'm afraid I may, sir. You are not a burden, sir. And you have my credit. I have to go. Done. What news, Jonathan? I've heard you've now joined the vampire elite of London. Did Elizabeth tell you? So it's Elizabeth now. My, my. Things are moving quickly. I turn my back for a moment and away you go. 
Have you seen Lady Asprey recently? Yes, she popped in yesterday. Told me about your new friends in the West End. Just a courtesy visit, then? Yes. And no. She was en route to the docks, I think, following a lead concerning your maker. How's the situation at the Pembroke? We're still holding out. Question is, for how long? What we really need is hope, Jonathan. Hope for a better tomorrow. I may have found the source of the contagion. Doris Fletcher, the actress. Thankfully, in the end, she was destroyed by fire. Really? Oh, please, do tell me more. Doris was a heavily mutated skull, almost a new breed entirely. It's as if the disease had completely altered her mind and body. Highly contagious. As if the disease had taken control of her will? Yes. Once a beautiful and brilliant woman, she became motivated by hate alone. Oh, she was a beauty. I met her when she visited the hospital to cheer up the sick. Too bad the fire destroyed her, but it was probably for the best. Have you heard of similar cases? No, I don't think so. Except, perhaps, it reminds me of an old report from the Brotherhood. Well, more an article, really. What was it about? The author, a friar, referred to a rare form of contagion in a skull he observed during the Black Death. The carrier was always female. They called them I-cores. I'll come back later. Thank you, Edgar. Always a pleasure to see you, my friend.
A restaurant where the guests are blindfolded before being seated. Intriguing. It's locked, all right. I cannot enter. I should find another way to get into the neighborhood.
can't believe I'm doing this. I have this thirst for blood. There has been a fight here. I can see a blood trail. Left by one of the antagonists, perhaps? What a mess. Something terrible happened here. But what? Domain, young Ekon! You cannot win this! I think this passage could lead me close to Aloysius Dawson's mansion. <laughs> 